this is the very first lesson of soil mechanics in this lesson we will learn why as a civil engineer we need to learn this soil mechanics and also how soil is formed what are the different form of soil okay and all this video material has been taken from in petal okay you can go to this website to get all this material absolutely free so before starting this video the credit goes to this nptl okay so let's start so what is soil actually well so it's actually differ from different type of profession uh, for a geologist the soil is a material uh, this is the topmost material on earth surface and for engineer the soil is something upon which we can build something okay upon which we can build a building or a bridge okay and on which we can build basement culvert tunnels like thing and also for a civil engineer a soil is something which can be supported by retaining wall and by using which we can make some embankment like roads dams etc okay so this is soil for us to an engineer okay so how soil is formed or what is soil okay so and why we need to learn this soil mechanics as a civil engineer you know if you suppose want to build something on the surface of this earth okay so what we need to know first the strength of this surface or the strength of the soil that's why we need to study the soil mechanics or let's say you have constructed something on a layer of clay soil and obviously after applying the load it will settle and how quickly it will settle or how much time is required for the settlement that will be known only when you know the permeability of the soil so after knowing the strength you also need to know the permeability of the soil for your construction purpose to all know to know the all these properties to know all this property we need to study this soil mechanics subject okay so now move forward how soil is formed before knowing about the soil first we need to know about rock okay let's consider this is the earth surface let's say this is a uh, mountain okay and this is the inner surface of the earth or you can say this is the lava or magma type of things okay uh, and what happened you know due to tectonic activity this magma come out through this mountain and it comes out to the surface and the rocks are formed when this magma cooled down what are these rocks well these rocks are known as igneous rocks okay so you have already formed these igneous rocks now what happened the rain drops or something like wind simply erode this rock so it simply disintegrate into small particles and then this rain accumulate them into the bottom of any ocean or any river like this and they compressed and formed another type of rock and these rocks are known as your sedimentary rock now when you by applying heat and pressure simultaneously uh, try to change this igneous rock and this sedimentary rocks they simply transfer or transfer igneous rock and as well as your sedimentary rock after applying heat and pressure they change and form metamorphic rock okay so these are the three type of rocks so rocks is the mother from where your soils are generated how how from rock we can get our soil so to bring out soil from this rock we need to break this rock simply we need to disintegrate it okay so who will disintegrate this rock let's consider a an igneous rock like this okay and it is somehow let's say in a region where there is a strong wind flowing 
the strong wind continuously erodes this surface and will form very small vertical that means after thousand of years if you go there you will see that there is no rock rather at a certain distance there are soils or sands like this a heap of sand or heap of soil so here wind is acting as the breaking force okay so is the wind is only the for only force to break this rock down no let's say again there is raining okay so again due to this flowing of water any rock under flowing of water simply they will disintegrate continuously previously this was safe then this becomes smaller so this part create smaller part of the rock and with time they turn into soil okay so this process is known as weathering the breaking process of the rock is known as weathering and this weathering can be physical as i've said here by wind by rain or by glacier okay these are the breaking force in case of physical weathering but the other process is chemical weathering that means excluding physical weathering the chemical weathering can also break this rock okay how let consider a calcium carbonate okay let's say this is a rock sedimentary rock and this is limestone calcium oxide okay now after rain what happened you simply add some water to this limestone and this become hydrated and form your calcium hydroxide well the volume of calcium hydroxide is more compared to this limestone that's why now this become your more in safe that means there is a internal stress acting within this rock due to this increment in volume and it simply integrate along this path and create smaller calcium hydroxide again the water simply when flow the leaks out this calcium hydroxide and your tiny particles are formed you can say you have got your soil particle from this limestone okay so it is clear to you how the soil is formed from different type of rocks by this physical weathering and chemical weathering okay so two steps are complete first step was you have formed rock from let's say magma for igneous rock or sedimentary rock by the decomposition or deposition of igneous rock under the she bed or river bed and then you have decomposed this rock into tiny particle by the weathering action whether it is physical weathering or chemical weathering okay now you have to transport this soil particle otherwise they will remain in this place okay so let's say previously here you have formed this soil this was your soil clear so if there is no force who will transport this soil they will remain here continuously and after thousand of years if you come here you will see this has eroded this part has eroded and this whole region has got a layer of soil instead of a rock because there was no one to carry or to transport this soil from this place to other place okay so if this is happen this type of soil are known as your residual soil so what is residual soil when there is no physical forces like rain water or wind or glacier to carry this soil what happened this disintegration of this rock is more compared to the transport of this soil particle clear and what happened if you transport this soil particle well what happened there is if there is rain simply this 
soil particle will be dissolved within this water and let's say this rain create a flow of water okay so within this flow of water this soil particle are dissolved okay and when the slope reduced what happens this particle are simply deposited on this plane and this type of soil are known as your alluvial deposits okay now let's say this river or this flow of water is not depositing this soil particle in any plane they simply enter this flow simply enter into a lake okay so what happened below this lake now this soil particle we deposit and this type of soil are known as lacustrine deposits when lacustrine deposit is related to your deposit at a lake and alluvial deposit is related to deposited by river on a plain okay and now let's say instead of entering into a lake this river or this flow of water enter into ocean this is the flow of water they enter into the ocean okay and again they will deposit this soil particle into the bed of this sea and in that case this soil is known as your marine deposit so marine deposit from the name you can guess this is related to your ocean okay and we have already considered three cases first is related to plain second was related to lake third one is related to ocean or sea now let's say go to any desert okay and there you can see this type of sand dunes are formed how because the strong wind in the desert simply blown away this soil or sand particle from one place to another place so here the carrying force is coming from your wind and this type of deposits are known as aeolian deposit aeolian this term has come from air okay and last one is glacial deposits well glacial moves very slowly but as they are heavy in nature they carry lots of debris underneath of them let's say this is the mountain and this is the glacier okay so huge glacier is coming or moving slowly at the bottom of them there are lots of debris which also move with this glacier and when this glacier melt down this deposits create one type of soil now why this glacier carry the debris or the rock particle because due to the scrabbing action or you can say the frictional force which is created due to the movement of this glacier let's say the glacier is moving in this direction this was your bed okay there is a huge weight acting here and this will create a debris like this due to frictional action in the bed and they will be embedded within this glacier now when this glacier melt down simply you will find a deposit and this is known as your glacier deposit that's all for the introductory relation in the next video we will discuss about the phase relationship of soil and at the end again the credits for this material go to the NPTEL.